Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for coming to the residence presentation. My name is Chris Elaine. I'm the Associate Vice President of Housing and Ancillary Services. Uh, what we're going to do over the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes is walk through uh, some of the really important information that you'll need to know about uh, living in residence for next year, your new home away from home. Uh, just some of the small fine print. Uh, the presentation is based on the assumption that we are returning to normalcy uh, next September. Certainly right now, if you have friends living in residence, uh, some of our residence rooms are de-densified. There's a number of health and safety strategies that are in place, some of them which likely will remain, uh, you know, sort of, but we wanted to just sort of uh, come from the perspective of this is what residence would look like and the experience would look like should, uh, you know, sort of, should there be a return to normalcy. Uh, there's certainly a lot of good information on our current residence website about what we're currently doing uh, to prioritize the health and safety of all of our students. Uh, that include things like a de-densification of residence rooms that are currently in place this year, how the dining hall works. Uh, so that's all found on our website, but uh, what you'll see over the next few slides will be what things would look like, um, you know, sort of uh, assuming that COVID is not going to impact uh, the, the residence program next year. So I always like to start off with that video just to capture uh, the excitement, the uh, the community, and uh, the home away from home that I, I think residence really has to offer. It's it's almost a no-brainer, I think, for students who go away to university to ensure that there's an environment where you meet others, um, you know, sort of, and, and really connect with the, the university and campus community. I, we're, we're quite fortunate, actually, in... in um, the last couple of weeks, McLean's uh, recently released their um, university rankings and uh, Western's residence is ranked number one uh, in our category. And we've uh, ranked number one for the last uh, five consecutive years. So we're quite proud of that accomplishment. Um, you know, sort of our residences are not just a place to eat and sleep. It's really a place where uh, community is built, where people feel supported, where there's leadership opportunities. Um, you know, and our amenities are second to none, uh, you know, sort of, but it's, I think, the people that really make this place, uh, you know, uh, an awesome, you know, sort of place to live. In terms of uh, how campus is sort of situated, I just wanted to show you this quick map. What you'll see here is sort of the dark purple are the student residences. And um, they're in the periphery of campus. All of the main academic classes are in the core. And so our first year residences are conveniently located just in the periphery, um, you know, sort of of campus. And, you know, is no more than about a 10 minute walk uh, from, uh, you know, sort of where you might be living to the center of campus. So, you know, in, in terms of proximity, you know, sort of you can roll out of bed, uh, you know, sort of a few minutes before class. Um, you know, sort of, and, and get to your, your lecture sort of uh, with plenty of time to spare uh, by living on campus. 
Residence is guaranteed for all single students coming directly from high school who receive a full-time admission to main campus by mid-May. So uh, our, residence, um, our residences are guaranteed for all incoming students from high school. Uh, another nice guarantee that we offer is that if you are entering with a 90% or higher final admission average from high school, you are guaranteed a single room in your second year as well. So, you know, I, I believe I've been highlighting a few of sort of these, um, you know, sort of benefits already about living in residence from, um, you know, sort of the ability to make friends and, you know, sort of be part of a community. But certainly, I think what we'll be covering uh, throughout this presentation are some of the other pieces, you know, what are the academic supports that we have in residence, um, you know, how do the dining halls work, um, you know, sort of what are some of the amenities and safety um, strategies that we put in place in residence to ensure that you're, um, you're taken care of while away, and then what are the leadership opportunities. I think it's really important not only, um, you know, sort of when you're going away to university, uh, you know, sort of have a place to live, but also how do you get connected to campus, uh, you know, and, and feel feel like you're part of, you know, sort of a, a new community away from home. We have three different styles of residence. Uh, this is the first style, a traditional style residence, um, you know, sort of is typically what you would see in the movies or on TV. Um, you know, sort of this is if uh, you have uh, parents who uh, lived in a university residence, this was the only style back then, right, where you would have uh, two people living in a double room. Uh, typically, and um, all the men on the floor would share a washroom, all the women on the floor share a washroom. Um, you'd have your own sort of closet, your own bed, desk. The majority of first year students live in double rooms. We have some limited single rooms. Those go to the upper year students first, and then there are a few single bedrooms uh, in traditional style residences uh, that uh, first years do sometimes get. Um, the important part about traditional style uh, residences, when people ask, well, what style do I, you know, sort of choose, uh, I would say that, you know, if, if you're looking for a good, strong sense of community and meeting others, traditional style residences are, I would recommend, um, you know, sort of uh, in, in terms of the ability to meet others, uh, you know, everyone on your floor will go down and have a shared meal and eat dinner together every night. Um, you know, sort of you, you'll hang out in the lounge and walk the, watch the hockey game together. Um, there's lots of, um, I guess, that the sense of community is almost built in quite naturally to just how uh, these residences are, are built. In terms of, um, in terms of cleaning, uh, because these are more high density uh, communal living environments, we do have caretaking staff who uh, work on the floor and they clean uh, the washrooms uh, every weekday. And they also, um, you know, sort of clean your bedroom every other week. So that's kind of a nice perk uh, to living uh, in residence at Western. We do have actually regular uh, housekeeping in your bedroom. So uh, that's that's something that people sort of uh, always highlight as something that uh, they are surprised about, uh, that they might not see at other schools as options, but we do offer regular housekeeping uh, in our residences. In terms of suite style residences, uh, these are uh, more independent uh, living environments, I would say. Uh, you typically would live in a suite with three other people. There are four single bedrooms. If a single bedroom is very important to you, uh, you may want to consider ranking a suite style residence a little bit higher in your, um, in your questionnaires, which I'll explain a little later. Uh, but you have your own single bedroom. Uh, these two people here on this end of the hall would share a washroom. There's a lot of storage space here. And these two people here would share their own washroom. And then the four people in the apartment share a little family room together and a kitchenette. So, uh, you know, sort of, I, I think in terms of these types of environments, you, you really get close with your uh, three other apartment mates, but you have to make a little bit of a more concerted effort to get to know the other people on your floor because they have their own, um, you know, self-contained apartment next door and, and so on. So uh, that's something to uh, just keep in mind. Uh, but if privacy is, uh, you know, sort of important to you, this might be the type of style uh, that you may wish to consider. In terms of uh, cleaning, I did indicate this is more independent living. Uh, so our caretaking staff do come in and help with light cleaning once a month in these particular residences. 
And then moving on to our third style, our newest style of residence are our hybrid residences. So you get a little bit of both in terms of the hybrid style residences. When we were about to build these, we asked our students, well, what exactly do you want to see in a residence? And they indicated, well, I actually don't mind living with a roommate. That double room experience is not a problem. It's just more uh, of a need for privacy from a washroom perspective. So in hybrid style residences, what you have are two adjacent double rooms where uh, you'd be in sort of a room with another roommate and these four individuals would share one washroom. Um, and then uh, there's a small little countertop here with an extra sink. This is where someone would bring a Keurig machine uh, or, or something like that, but there's no um, there's no cooking facilities in uh, our hybrid style uh, residences. And then this is a nice large closet as well for just storage. So in terms of our three residence styles, um, really it's, it's personal preference as to, you know, sort of uh, how you rank uh, all of the buildings. Uh, some people, uh, when I get to the residence placement questionnaire, um, we ask you actually to rank all seven of our first year residences using whatever criteria you choose. Uh, some people like to rank their uh, residences based on cost. They want the more economical choices, which would be our traditional style building. So they rank those uh, near the top and then they rank the most expensive ones, which are the suite style residences at the bottom. Some people rank the residences based on proximity to their classes. Uh, some people really, really, you know, want the privacy, so they rank the suite style, um, you know, sort of number one. So everyone actually has a different criteria for how you rank residences, uh, you know, sort of when you're looking to um, prioritize them. Uh, we guarantee you a spot in one of the seven, uh, but you use sort of the information that you have uh, ahead of time to provide us a ranking. Um, and I'll explain how sort of the, the residence placements sort of work a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, another sort of highlight is our upper year residences. Uh, I did indicate that, um, you know, sort of all incoming students with a 90% final average are guaranteed a single room in our um, in second year in residence as well. Uh, we have two additional residences that are available exclusively to upper year students. Uh, that is Alumni House and London Hall, uh, where there are now optional meal plans, uh, double beds uh, versus sort of the, the twin bed that you would normally get. Um, and, uh, you know, sort of the guest policy is a little bit more relaxed. Uh, you know, sort of, so, uh, you know, sort of our upper year residences, I want to plant the seed now. I know sort of you're just really thinking about coming to Western now, uh, but we do have the options available uh, for you on campus should you really enjoy your residence experience and want to continue that into your upper years. All of our first year residences feature the same amenities, so you get the same experience no matter what building you live in. Every residence has 24 hour front desk access where there's a concierge, uh, you know, sort of to help you uh, with directions, inquiries, if you want to sign out a vacuum cleaner or the Xbox or whatever it is, um, they're always available uh, for you uh, 24 hours a day. They're, uh, you know, sort of, they're, they're staffed. Um, you know, sort of, we have the furnishings in the bedrooms, um, you know, sort of lots of, uh, you know, sort of uh, common space for you to do group work. Um, independent study, floor lounges to hang out in, workout rooms, uh, piano rooms, um, laundry facilities. I'll explain what living learning communities are a little bit later, uh, but there's a lot of different options. No matter what residence you live in, you'll get the same experience. Uh, internet, our internet is um, provided in the residence room and our residences are all uh, Wi-Fi connected. So uh, for those who wish to subscribe to the residence internet connection, uh, that's just sort of a, a checkbox on the residence questionnaire. In terms of meal plans, uh, we have dining halls in all of our first year residences. I think what we find important is that um, the sense of community that's built around a shared meal, around, you know, being able to talk about your day, what you had to deal with in class with your floor mates is a really important time uh, for you to connect with your floor mates. I think that can be more challenging when you have one central commissary in the, in the middle of campus, um, you know, sort of, and, and you know, that, that sense of community, I don't think is built as easily. Uh, so we've made it a point 
uh, to build residence dining halls in every single one of our first year buildings uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, sort of that community building is, is, is a focus. Uh, we have a nutritionist on staff who helps our students regularly with trying to decide menu items. If you have allergies, food preferences, they're always available to, to, to assist. Uh, in terms of how the meal plan works at Western, it's basically a declining balance system. So it's like a debit card. So you start off with a certain number of credits, about 2,800 credits, $2,800 worth of credits at the beginning of the year, and you pay for what you eat. So, uh, you know, in, in the morning, if I grab, uh, you know, sort of uh, a scoop of scrambled eggs, uh, you know, sort of some bacon and a coffee, um, you know, sort of I'll take that to the register, I'll weigh that. And, uh, you know, usually my breakfast will come to, you know, two or three dollars and I'll just swipe uh, my Western One card, which is my ID card. And that will pay for my and that three dollars is deducted off of sort of my overall total. Uh, so the nice thing about sort of this declining balance is that if I run out of money at any point in time, I call up mom or dad and I say, hey, I need a little bit more money. And, uh, you know, uh, we can add money at any given time. And the other nice thing about it is that, um, you know, sort of if there's money left over at the end of the year, that money actually transfers over to next year. That's the default. Um, so we're not like some other schools where you got to use it or lose it. Um, for us at Western, our meal plan is very flexible. If there's ever leftover money, you can ask for that as a refund. Uh, or the majority of students just say, you know what, leave it on my meal plan and they'll use it for the following year and it'll work in second year. Uh, in terms of our, our residence dining halls, um, you know, sort of we, um, you know, sort of are, are really proud of what we have to offer. Our dining halls are not, I think, what most people consider. Um, they're pretty, you know, Marche style where you walk in and there's a plethora of options. Um, you know, so sort of there are hot meals that are available on a six week menu cycle. So what you see for lunch today, you will not see for lunch again until six weeks uh, down the road. So you can actually go online and check out the menu and see what's for dinner, what's for lunch, uh, you know, sort of for for every single day for the next six weeks, basically. And then once that six weeks uh, over, the cycle starts again. The nice thing as well is that in January, we start a completely different six week cycle. So we really, uh, you know, we're mindful that, you know, people are looking for variety and it's not going to be the same thing every day. There are some key, um, you know, sort of staples. We make sure that, you know, sort of our students have always said, you know, grilled cheese sandwiches always have to be on Thursdays and um, sushi is always on Wednesday. So there are some key see key um, menu items that you'll see on certain days of the week but really for the majority of our hot meal options um, they are available you know sort of on a six-week menu cycle there are lots of interactive uh, you know sort of options as well where um, beyond just the hot food we have a salad bar we have a sandwich bar soup bar um, you know, so there's fresh made sushi there's um, you know flatbreads and pizzas that are usually available um, but all of these sort of, you know, like the sandwich bar, for example, um, you, you tell the, you know, you, you, you tell the, the chef what type of proteins you would like to put in your sandwich, what type of bread you want to use, what condiments, what vegetables, and they'll grill that up for you. Same thing in our active interactive uh, you know, sort of menus where every night there's some sort of different interactive option. So tonight might be a pasta bar where you pick the pasta, you pick the sauce, you pick the protein, you pick the vegetables. Tomorrow it's going to be a fajita bar where you pick, you know, the protein, what type of wrap you want. Uh, the next day it's going to be a, uh, you know, sort of a, a ramen uh, or pho soup, um, you know, sort of option. So, you know, every night there's also interactive options for our students to choose, um, which really gives a lot of variety. Uh, your residence dining um, plan does work in other residences as well on main campus. So if, for example, you're across campus and you're visiting a friend or there's a different residence dining hall that's closer to your class that you just want to pop in and grab lunch in between, uh, you're also able to use your, your, um, your meal plan at other residence dining halls. Outside of the residence dining halls, um, you are also able to use them on your uh, at your campus uh, on campus. So we have 22 different campus eateries, and this is where you'll see, you know, sort of Tim Hortons and Starbucks and Subway, or um, you know, just some of our other um, on-campus options, uh, and also our vending machines. So on campus, 
uh, your resin installers uh, do work and can be used and they can also be used off campus. Uh, so the nice part of around sort of the flexibility of the meal plan is that, um, you know, sort of uh, you can treat yourself from time to time, order in a pizza using your residence meal plan dollars. And there are some select uh, local restaurants, Jack Astor's, for example, that, you know, sort of or Swiss Chalet that you can also dine out. Uh, and so this is, the, you know, the off-campus options, I would say, are more of a treat. Uh, I think part of going away to university is learning a lot of life skills and part of your meal plan is actually managing a budget. Budget, right there are a finite amount of uh, dining uh, residence dining dollars on your meal plan that you can track at any given time so um, you know so I would say you get your best bang for your buck if you're eating in the residence dining halls you know part of your residence fees you've already paid for the overhead of running our dining halls uh, of you know paying for the salaries of the chefs and ensuring that the mortgage and the utilities are, are paid for all of that's already included in your residence fees so when you pay for your food and residence you're just paying for the food cost if you go out and eat somewhere else um, you know sort of pizza pizza for example you're paying the full retail price for a pizza right a, a full-size pizza um, you know, sort of if you order in is going to cost you about $20, but if you're just, um, you know, sort of buying pizza within the residence dining halls, you're going to be paying maybe $2 for a slice, uh, you know, sort of, or maybe even less because all of the other added costs have already been covered. So, uh, you know, moving on from sort of the meal plan, you know, so we, I, I want to highlight some of our uh, safety and security measures. Safety is a shared responsibility with our students. Uh, and with the residence community, but we also put in place a few, um, you know, sort of strategies to, you know, sort of ensure that we're creating a safer community for those who live on campus. Our front desk staff, as I highlighted, is available during the day, um, you know, sort of, uh, and by phone 24 seven, uh, you have front desk access uh, all day. Um, you know, sort of in terms of front doors, they're locked, so you use your Western One ID card to swipe in. Uh, we have guest registration that's set up on weekends to ensure that in the evenings, the only people who are coming into the building are those who live in the building. Uh, we have on-call staff, our residents, Don, sort of help throughout the evening times to deal with emergencies, and we also have on-campus security services, so our campus police officers, our student emergency response team, uh, foot patrol is our sort of uh, walk home safe program, and uh, emergency phones across campus. So uh, those are just you know a few of our strategies that that we put in place uh, you know sort of for the security of our buildings. In terms of staff support, our student leaders, we do have um, residents dons who live on every floor uh, to assist you in your transition to university. If you have questions around who to go to, or um, you know sort of you you aren't you aren't sure sort of which office to reach out to. Our residence dons are available to assist you with, with those questions. Um, you know, our academic and leadership programmers, we have uh, these student staff members in every building to also be additional go-to people should you uh, have questions uh, about your particular courses. Um, they are also running events usually and, and run seminars like how to how to write you know, multiple choice exams or how to manage your time effectively when studying. They have a lot of different seminars that they usually run for our students and residents and our orientation leaders. These are upper year students who are volunteers who also assist uh, with acquainting you during orientation week um, to campus and also being there as uh, good role models and mentors as well throughout the year and work in tandem with uh, the residence dons to create a nice tight-knit floor community. We have full-time residence managers who live in uh, and, and work uh, in the residences who lead uh, sort of these student uh, leader teams and our front desk staff, our caretaking staff, our dining hall staff are all, uh, you, you really get to know them. I think they become sort of part of your um, you know, sort of extended family, um, you know, sort of because you see them on a daily basis. And so, uh, you know, sort of they're here looking out for your well-being throughout the year. We have living learning communities in residence, uh, which provide an option for students who are looking to live on a themed floor uh, with people who share similar interests as them. So there's no additional cost to these. This is really in your residence questionnaire. If you're interested in them, they might influence how you rank a residence building, um, but really what we ask 
uh, you and your residence questionnaire is, if you end up in X building, would you be interested in living on this particular floor? So we have faculty-based floors, for example, where if you were, let's say, an incoming music student, you'll see that Delaware Hall offers a music floor. You may wish to, if that's really important to you, um, it may influence uh, you know, sort of where you place Delaware Hall in your building rankings. And then we also ask the question, if you ended up in Delaware Hall, would you like to live on the music floor? Uh, certainly you have to be in the faculty, uh, you know, sort of to, to actually be placed on one of these floors. Uh, but this is really a personal preference. I think some people believe, um, you know, sort of that living with other classmates gives you an academic advantage. You have an opportunity to um, to study and to create study groups with people. You can walk to class with someone every day uh, because everyone on the floor uh, is taking the same sort of courses that you are. That's, that's certainly something that is attractive to some students. Uh, on the flip side, some people say, I'm going to see those music students every day in class. Why do I want to live, breathe, and you know, sort of eat and spend every waking hour with these students? I actually want to meet engineers, and I want to meet nursing students, and I want to meet you know political science students. So they just choose to not you know sort of rank or, or apply for these living learning communities. And the majority of our floors are just um, you know sort of uh, floors where we just put people from all different faculties together. Uh, so this. You know, might be an option for you, but I do want to highlight uh, these faculty-based living learning communities. Other living learning communities that we offer include interest-based floors. So in some buildings, we also have, um, you know, sort of um, communities where we might place people with, um, you know, various interests. Uh, so if uh, gaming, esports is, you know, sort of interest to you, you know, we have a community at Essex Hall for esports. Uh, leadership and uh, you know, volunteering, if that's a, a passion of yours, uh, that's available at Perth Hall and Soggy Maitland Hall. Uh, entrepreneurial, uh, you know, sort of uh, community is available at uh, Delaware. Our LGBTQ and ally floor is available at Ontario Hall. And our Ayung Gwinaktiohage, or um, Indigenous and ally community, is also available at Delaware Hall. So, um, you know, sort of, I don't think you need to necessarily identify either with some of these affinity groups. Uh, if you are interested in learning more, if you are a strong ally uh, to some of these communities, you're also more than welcome to, um, to you know, express your interest and also rank these in your um, questionnaire. Lastly, we have lifestyle-based floors. These are available in our um, traditional style buildings, Soggy Maitland Hall and Medway Sydenham Hall. Um, so if you would be interested in uh, living with like-minded people who share the same lifestyle as you around alcohol-free, um, if uh, you're looking for a women-only floor or a quieter lifestyles floor, these are also some options that you could rank in your, in your questionnaire. Uh, another sort of piece just to be aware of, uh, this is, I think we're going into year three of, of this, is we, we provide all incoming students with the option of living in single gender rooms and suites or mixed gender rooms and suites. So there is a question at the very early, very early on in the question, in the residence questionnaire that asks you, what would you prefer? Would you like to, you know, be paired with um, you know, potential roommate or potential suite mates who are of the same gender as you, or you may not care, right? And so if, uh, if you want to ensure that you're with roommates or suite mates who identifies the same gender as you, select single gender um, as your option. If you don't care, you know, sort of an, if I identify as a man um, and I check off mixed gender uh, rooms or suites, what mixed gender is is we won't look at gender when placing people together. So if I don't mind, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sort of what what sort of options I end up with, and you and I check off mixed gender because I identify as a man, I may end up with another man as a roommate, but I could also end up with a woman as a roommate. So that's something to just be uh, aware of in terms of our options for accommodation. Uh, these are available for you. Um, you know, sort of the default is going to be single gender, uh, but we do want to, based on student feedback, provide um, this as an option. 
I think we have a lot of students now who are coming from households where, you know, you're sharing your washroom with your siblings or, you know, sort of uh, brother and sister might even share a bedroom. And so don't mind sort of this mixed gender environment. Um, and so to some of our students, this is an option that we are providing and are available. Uh, there's a really informative video actually on our residence placement questionnaire that explains this a little bit more fully uh, for those who are interested in these options. So in terms of building placements, um, you know, sort of, uh, I've sort of highlighted already what will happen. So you'll go on to our website, myhousing.uwo.ca, and complete your placement questionnaire. So we ask you to rank all seven of our first-year residences based on whatever criteria you want to use. And basically, everyone, once we get everyone's sort of uh, rankings, um, the easiest way to explain this is we put everyone's name into a hat, basically, and we start drawing names out of that hat. And when I get to your name, when I pull your name out of that hat, I look at your first choice of residence. And if that residence is full at that point, I'll move on to your second choice of residence. And if that residence is full, I'll move on to choice number three. And oh, there's room in your, your third ranked residence, you'll end up in your third ranked residence. So. Um, you know, sort of, it's the most fair way for us to actually place people in residences. Certainly, there are going to be people through the system that are very lucky and get, you know, sort of pulled out of their, um, get pulled out of the hat close to the beginning. They're likely going to get their top choices. Um, but it's certainly possible that for those who get pulled out of the hat closer to the end, it's likely that their first choices are going to be, um, you know, sort of full, and they may end up with their last choices. So again, remember, it's not um, it's not the end of the world if you don't get your top choice of residence. Uh, I think the amenities are the same. The residence life program is the same. It's really the people that make your residence experience. Um, you know, sort of. So I want people to at least consider that. Uh, you know, sort of when placing, uh, when 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 giving their preferences. These are preferences. Um, you know, and, and students will find out about their actual residence assignment um, in midsummer. In terms of roommate matching, um, we do offer roommate matches. So if you have a friend from high school, let's say, who you would like to live with, uh, or you know, sort of live side by side uh, in a suite style residence, you can ensure you can basically on your placement questionnaire um, let us know. Uh, that you are hoping to live with X person and they need to do the same thing on their end. So, um, you know, sort of the fine print is you both need to receive your guaranteed residence offers, pay your fees on time. You do have to rank your building preferences the same. So make sure that you have a good conversation with each other about that and join the same roommate group in the My Housing Portal. So there's instructions online that will explain how to do that. I would say the majority of our students actually don't know someone that they're coming with and don't request a roommate, um, you know, sort of so we typically place people together. The majority of students we place together with roommates that they aren't familiar with prior to coming to Western. So as part of the placement questionnaire, there are a number of lifestyle based questions uh, that we do ask you. So uh, my advice here is to be as honest and open as possible. Parents, if you're watching, my advice to you is leave the room. Don't fill it out for your students uh, because sometimes students fill out these questionnaires different if you're not watching. Uh, but what we want to do is we want you to be as honest as possible in ensuring that you're letting us know um, some of these lifestyle questions, right? What is your preferred room temperature? Do you prefer living in the desert or in an ice box? Do you prefer, uh, how clean would you consider your room? Um, you know, sort of, do you study with music? Do you study in silence? How early do you get up in the morning? How late do you get up? These are the types of questions from a lifestyle perspective that are going to set you up academically for success, right? We want to ensure that you get paired with someone of similar lifestyle preferences we do not ask general questions. We're not match.com. We don't ask questions like, um, you know, sort of what type of music do you like to listen to? Um, you know, sort of are you team Kanye? Are you team T Swift? We don't ask those. People can get over those things. Um, it's really, uh, you know, sort of the lifestyle preferences that we want to pair uh, similar people up with so that that will really set you up more for success 
uh, academically. So uh, you can go one of two routes. Again, the majority of students usually just uh, don't know someone coming in, uh, you know, and so will, uh, you know, sort of just uh, not have a requested roommate and will place, place you together with someone of similar lifestyle. In terms of the steps for accepting your residence offer, when you do receive your Western uh, acceptance letter uh, online, you'll see that the number two, um, you know, sort of uh, once you've accepted, the number two sort of step that you do is plan for housing. So there is no separate application. When you get your offer to Western, you will automatically get a residence offer. Uh, all you need to do, however, is let us know that you're coming. So to accept your residence offer, what we ask you to do is to log into our website, complete your residence questionnaire with all the questions, all of the rankings of the, the residences that I've explained, and submit a $900 deposit um, by June 3rd. So you have until June 3rd to complete, to provide all of the information we're looking for and to make your deposit payment. Uh, and then that's it. So in terms of the residence fees, these are the all-inclusive fees based on the type of residence that you get placed in. So from a budgeting perspective, this is something you need to understand um, and start budgeting for. Uh, this does include both roommates and your meal plan. Some schools only, you know, sort of give you the, the room, the residence room, and you've got to have to find sort of the meal plan rate. This is all-inclusive. Part of the meal plan includes $2,800 or so of your meal plan credits. Right. So um, remember that twenty eight hundred dollars, if you eat too much, you could run out. But that money is refundable or carries over uh, if you don't go through your twenty eight hundred dollars of meal plan credit. So just so you know, that twenty eight hundred dollars of a meal plan credit is included in these inclusive rates as well. In terms of what's next. Um, you know, sort of this offer book, all of this information, all of the pictures of the different rooms that we have available, you know, the chart of where all of the different living learning communities are associated and, and where they are located from, uh, you know, in each residence is available on this offer book. So, you know, we encourage you to just go and, um, you know, sort of take a peruse. Um, we've not uploaded the 2021 offer book yet, but it will be available very soon uh, for you to take a look at. Um, and also you can connect with us online. You can visit our website, you can email us, or you can visit us on social and uh, we'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. In terms of what we'll do now is we're going to break um, and I'll end this uh, presentation and any specific questions that you have um, can be addressed in the uh, live chat that you'll see sort of in the middle of your screen. So thanks very much for your time. Um, we are really excited and hope to see many of you uh, this coming September and uh, look forward to answering any of the questions that you might have in the chat. Take care everyone and thanks for joining us.